Over the last 25 years, I've spent much time spinning for bass on rocky coastlines, beaches, traveling around the world and targeting a variation of fish using lures. During that time, I've identified for me what I consider the most important features for a good spinning rod for targeting, whether it be bass or, or larger species of fish from the shore. And we put all those requirements together to design a spinning rod, which is called the Samson Longcast. So this rod is 12 foot long. It's rated at 30 to 100 grams. But um, basically over the last year and a half, I've been using anything from 15 grams, 10 grams actually, right up to 130 grams, depending on where I'm fishing. If I've been fishing on the coastline in small seas, fishing for bass, I've been using 10 to 15 grams, maybe 21 grams. And as the sea states increased, I've been using 30 grams, 50 grams, even up to 80 or 90 grams in the really windy conditions or the rougher seas. Also, I've been traveling overseas recently um, to Central America where at times I needed 130 gram lures to, to really get some distance. And yeah, the rods handled all those weights really well. So, so for me, it's been a good all round rod that I can use in whatever the conditions and not have to you know, change my rod if I want to cast a little bit lighter lures or a little bit heavier lures. In some spots I find I turn up to and I need a heavier lure because the sea is quite rough there and uh, you might turn around to fish another spot, just another mark close by and you need a lighter lure and I can just switch over to that easily. Generally, if you'd ask a fisherman what are the advantages of a long spinning rod, say a 12 foot spinning rod, they'd say the casting distance. Now, casting distance obviously is a great advantage with a longer rod and you can really get some good distances, but really it's just the tip of the iceberg. There's, there's so many good advantages that I've found over the years to having longer rods, which is why it was um, yeah, essential to design a rod like this that could do a variety of things. So when you're bass fishing on the coastline, you're generally going to be fishing around rocks where there's structure, um, unless you're fishing in an estuary. And this is where a long rod really comes in, in handy. Say you've, you've caught a fish and you've got some rocks out in front. The angle that you're going to be able to create with a, a longer rod holding that rod up, um, being able to keep that line away from the rocks is really important. Obviously, the lower that rod is, the closer that line is going to be to the rocks. Especially if that fish dives down a little bit, it's going to create even more angle, making it even more important really to get that rod high and to create as much angle as you can on the fish to keep the line away from the rocks. Uh, same with rocks out to the side, you can just reach out, bring that fish away from the rocks much easier than when you're using a shorter rod. And yeah, quite recently actually in Central America, I was playing a couple of really big jacks, really powerful jacks around in, in close quarters with a lot of rocky terrain, a lot of structure there. And I quite literally would have lost both of those fish if I had um, anything like a 10 foot rod or less. Um, I needed every inch of that rod. I was actually leaning out trying to, trying to keep that fish away from the rocks and it really came in handy there. That for me is so important when you're fighting fish close around the rocks and you need to keep them away. On the second jack I caught, a blue thin trevally, I had like a bommy rock right out in front of me and I had to literally lean out, keeping the rod tip up just to create as much angle as I could. And obviously if you can imagine, if your rod's in close, the angle is not gonna be anywhere near as good. So with a shorter rod, you're, you're in danger of obviously getting reefed much easier. Um, it's gonna be different on a boat, but when you're around structure from the shore, for me, a long rod is really essential. In a similar way, it's equally important when working your lures, not only when you're hooked up to a fish, but actually working your lures around rocks can be really handy. 
especially if you want to fish over rough terrain like I like to because basically that's where the bass are or that's where the fish can be around the structure and you might have shallow areas and if you're fishing at a higher angle you can just put your rod tip up you can bring those lures around the rocks you can bring them to the side avoiding rocks and just makes working the lure so much easier around that kind of rough terrain where there's a lot of structure so if for example you've got a rock a rock out here so a rock here and um, you're bringing your lure this way and that rock's in the way okay you don't want to snag it you're just going to easily be able to bring your rod out at more of an angle create more of an arc and just work it between the rocks i literally work the lures around the rocks in especially in close quarters or hold it up and uh, just makes it so much easier you know if that rod's shorter you've only got so much angle that you can create and only so much arc that you can you can work with to you know to, to maneuver that lure around the rocks so the control you need again it's really important with a longer rod some people might find that they don't fish in those kind of conditions they avoid sort of really rocky conditions difficult structure but basically that's where the fish are the fish love to be around structure rocks over this kind of ground so the the easier you can fish these type these kind of marks this kind of ground the more chance you've got to get in into fish I actually get quite a few people contact me asking do I lose a lot of lures over the kind of terrain I fish. Often fishing with surface sinking lures over pretty shallow terrain and uh, you know they ask how do you avoid it or do you lose a lot of lures as well. But I can honestly say I hardly lose any lures. Very very rarely do I lose a lure to a rock. I've probably lost more lures just leaving them on rocks and forgotten about them the, or falling in than I have actually losing them on rocks and I'd say the big reason for that is obviously experience definitely helps but more than anything is having the long rod that I'm able to control the lure far easily and maneuver it around the rocks. In a similar way if I'm working a lure in pretty fast and say it gets a chase from like a rooster fish if I'm fishing overseas and I really want to increase the speed right there as I see that fish behind it because roosters like to, to see that lure moving fast you can just use the rod tip and it's going to have a much greater pull and you're going to be able to affect that lure much quicker or if you've got um, a wave in front it's going to break and you've got your lure in front and you need to get that lure quickly out of the way you don't want to get it washed onto the rocks and wound around a rock again you can use the length of the rod to pull that lure quickly as you're winding up the slack so if you like surf casting and you're fishing from the beach in waves having that length on the rod is very important to keep the line out of the waves um, you might be fishing directly in front and you can keep that rod tip up whilst you're working the lure but also if you're fishing from beaches or from rocks and you're casting across the waves it's really important to be able to keep that line high again that angle so as you're working the lure as waves come up in front you can keep that line out of the waves so avoid being dragged by the waves so staying in contact with that lure is really important and if you're being dragged by waves all the time you're really going to lose contact with the lure and obviously there's a risk of getting it wound around rocks but also the action you're trying to put into the lure to attract the fish is also going to be affected. One of the other really important factors is working the lures. So having the right rod tip is really important for me for the lure and something that's fairly stiff that you're able to work the lures uh, has been one of the most important factors for me as well. I like to put a lot of action into the lures to create kind of injured bait fish look, you know, to entice the fish into striking. So if you're basically just retrieving lures, winding them in straight, I think you're really missing a trick there. There's a lot more you can do with the lure, um, especially Samson lures are designed to be worked, they're designed to be cast at distance and then worked either across the surface or just below. And it's a lot easier if you've got the right rod to do that. If you've got a rod with a soft rod tip, it can be really difficult to actually work the lures and get the right action out how those lures were designed. A lot of the action is going to end up going into the rod tip rather than into the lure and you'll find you're going to be doing a lot of exaggerated movements to get the action that you want. The Samson long cast has got a, 
a fairly stiff rod tip as I was saying and that allows you to put a lot of action into the lure with minimal effort. So whether it just be small taps of the rod tip or longer sweeps of the rod tip, you really want that rod to be sort of sensitive to the lure so the lure is reacting to each tap. Another really important factor um, when we were designing this rod was its strength and lifting capabilities. So we used Japanese technology to create a blank which was light yet strong and capable of landing a fish up against the rocks or even lifting a smaller fish out of the water. It can be quite dangerous out on the rocks especially when there's some swell running and uh, in certain situations you really need a little bit of help from the rod to actually lift a fish out depending on the size of it and basically in depending on the conditions. Um, if I can avoid lifting a fish out, I always will, but sometimes conditions can be pretty dangerous, pretty sketchy, and, you've, and you know, it might be the better option just to basically lift that fish out. And um, I found that not all rods are actually able to do that, so having something could actually lift a dead weight was really important in, when we designed this rod. So if you're lifting a fish out and you're a few meters above and you've got the fish down below and you're lifting it, it's a completely different angle you're gonna have that rod at to whereas you're lifting something off of the floor. So I wanted to lift something off the floor, a good weight, which um, I think would be around about a 70 degree angle, which is very close to actually high sticking the rod, which I certainly wouldn't recommend, but we really wanted to give it a good test. So as I say, with this five kilo medicine ball, I was able to lift it off of the ground. And as you can see from the video, the rod maintains a really nice shape all the way through and is able to lift the medicine ball. That's a really challenging test for any rod, I think, especially a spinning rod like this of that length. Until you've actually got a heavy weight on the end of your rod, it's really hard to imagine how heavy that weight actually is, especially at the angle you're lifting it from. So not only have I found this rod ideal for bass fishing, it's also ideal for fishing for a variety of pelagics if you're traveling overseas and need something that can handle bigger fish as well. Um, it's been tested overseas with tuna. We've had uh, Matt McCulloch using it for tuna over the last year and he's had some really big fish he's brought out off the, off the rocks with it. So it's certainly capable of bigger fish. We've had Mulloway caught surf casting, big Mulloway, which again is another good test of the rod. For that kind of fishing, they needed some long casting and to get out to a good distance and also a strong rod, obviously to handle the bigger, bigger size fish. So we currently have two rods available at the moment. We have the standard version at 320 grams and we have the extra heavy version at 370 grams. So both rods are very similar. As I said, they're rated between 30 and 100 grams, but you can go a lot less and you can cast more. The difference being in the butt section, the extra heavy is actually capable of lifting heavier weights. In the blank stage, we lifted um, 11 kilos with the extra heavy, seven kilos with the standard. So for me, the Samson long cast isn't just about the excellent casting capabilities of the rod. Um, of course, it's really important if you're, if you're say, surf casting and you want to get out further to the, you know, to the breaking waves or the sandbar that's out there, or you're off the rocks and you want to reach some reef further out where there's some white water. These situations are really important. And yes, the rod's going to get you out to those distances to cover a lot more ground. But for me, as I say, it's a lot more about some of the other factors, working the lure, having the right tip, being able to maneuver the lures, you know, having the reach to work lures or control fish around the rocks. So all these factors are really essential for a practical and an effective spinning rod.